In this interview, artist Will Ross speaks against the Blue Wall at 411 Kent, a space for live performance in Brooklyn. My name is Will Rawls, and uh, I work primarily in dance and choreography, and I also make video and screen printing work and sculpture. I am six foot three inches tall. I have light brown skin. My face is covered with freckles. I'm wearing a black sweatshirt and a black cap with a skull printed on it. I've always really loved studying languages and um, writing and storytelling. And so in performance, when you're working with bodies, you don't have always the benefit of language to describe what's happening. So I've become really interested in communication difficulty and communication problems and how to center those as a key part of the performance experience for both the performer and the audience. So in Sicker, uh, what you would see is um, a black box theater. And inside of the black box theater, there is a green screen that's installed that creates a kind of artificial back wall against which the performers are dancing, talking, moving objects. And while they're doing that, they're being photographed by a camera that's taking a photograph every few seconds. We live at a time when, you know, there's a camera that's sort of embedded in our conscious minds all the time now, whether or not we're standing in front of a camera, we could always potentially be photographed. So the work is trying to explore the stress that I feel about that and the trap of the sort of ever-present camera and the labor of becoming a moving image. The title comes from my interest in um, drawing attention to the ways in which we point out deviations from standard English in written text. So when you write an essay and you quote someone and the spelling of what they say is non-standard, you put S-I-C, sick, next to their quote to point out that you know as a writer that that's not correct English. You know what I mean? So I find that to be problematic because it's like in using someone else's statement, you're also pointing out how they are wrong in a kind of, you know, in a kind of proper context. And that's, uh, that's something that happens to people of color all the time. Um, and standard English, you know, if you expand that becomes a kind of sort of white supremacist structure of society the ways in which we speak, socialize, dance, move, might be ambiguous or opaque or strange to some eyes, but not within a community that's developing those kinds of languages together. And a lot of my performances is about how the performers take the tools that I share with them and develop physical and vocal and character vocabularies that are endemic to that group. I think most of life is now designed to be frictionless, you know, with media and, you know, our sort of cashless apps and all this stuff. So I think friction is a crucial aspect of relationships and relationship building that is being kind of choreographed out of our lives. In terms of art practice and dance making, I've always been interested in bodies in contact with things other than just the air. Objects, fabric, vocalization, sound, walls, public space, and that is a frictive, heated, clumsy, and eventually articulate way of being.